Okay, so there's video games, there's sports, but nothing is as fun as doing a math word problem. Now, a lot of you out there are saying, oh my goodness, this guy's just too excited about math. Maybe you're almost ready to just leave this video. Listen, hold on one second. Your attitude towards anything you do is going to count a lot. And when you look at a math word problem, instead of saying, oh, I hate word problems, try to have the attitude of adventure. Be like, okay, I'm going to figure this thing out. It's kind of like a puzzle or a riddle. So, you know, your attitude, again, is critical to your success in math. But let's take a look at this problem. Of course, I want to discuss exactly how to solve it. And the problem is this. Ron is six feet tall. His shadow is 20 feet. How tall is the tree next to him if it has a shadow of 90 feet? Okay, so if you think you can answer this question correctly, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section, but let me give you a couple quick hints here. So anytime you're tackling any math for a problem, I'm gonna give you the first three steps. So step one is to read the problem, which seems pretty obvious. Step two is to reread the problem, and you guessed it, step three is to read the problem even again. All right, too uh, frequently, students uh, just read the problem once and they start doing stuff, okay? And they don't really understand what the question is or they think they got the question and then they answer something else. So you have to be very clear on what the question being asked in the problem is. And how can you identify any question? Just go to the question mark and then back up, okay? So let's go identify, there's the question mark. So when we read the, the actual question in the prom, it is how tall is the tree? So we're looking for the height of a tree. Of course, I'm gonna show you the correct answer here in just one second, but if you're at the middle or high school level in terms of mathematics, this is a very typical type of prom they're gonna be asked to uh, uh, solve. So anyways, we're gonna to get to all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I can tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that don't like math or maybe are struggling with math or if you've failed math before in the past. You know, listen, all that stuff doesn't have to have any bearing on your future success in mathematics, okay, or your potential to learn math, okay? So just because you've had bad experience with math, you can turn this around 180 degrees. But what you need is the um, basically three things. One, you have to be willing to work hard, okay, because learning math does require some effort. Uh, the second thing you, you need is uh, encouragement, okay? Hopefully you have a great math teacher that's kind of giving you that encouragement. But the third and most important thing you need is great math instruction, clear understandable and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for some sort of special test uh, that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the SAT test, ACT, GED, ASVAB, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, things like that. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well, because too many students take poor notes. They're like, um, oh yeah, I take notes. And what they're doing is they're just kind of scribbling stuff down. It's kind of like how I used to do stuff <laughs> way back in the good old 1980s in high school. I'm like, look at me, I'm taking notes. Uh, you know, I'm writing stuff down. And then when I go back and look at my notes, I have no idea what I wrote. So your uh, note-taking is only effective if you're being neat and organized and detailed, okay? It is a skill, but the better your notes are, the better you're off you're going to be in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So here it is. The tree is 27 feet tall. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let me give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate your success in math word problems today. Now, here's the deal, right, is how did you justify your conclusion? So let's say this was a quiz or test question, and you wrote down 27 feet as your final answer. So I'm going to show you kind of, you know, uh, kind of a 
standard way of doing this problem. And we're going to talk about the big picture uh, concepts going on here because this is a pretty classic type of word problem that you're going to face at the middle school and high school level, uh, math level. But here's the thing, right? Let's just say you're just came across this video and you're like, yeah, I don't really know exactly what this is called, but I can just kind of reason through and get this answer. That's perfectly fine. Just as long as you justify your reasoning, that's what you have to do. Okay. So just be like, Oh, here's the answer. I'm not quite sure how I got it. I just kind of like you know, mentally uh, willed, <laughs> just told my mind, hey, give me the answer. Listen, uh, that's not going to be good enough, right? You have to back up your answer with uh, steps, right? So that's the key. That's really the essence of doing mathematics is to justify and prove your conclusions. Okay, so anytime you're doing math, you want to show your work. And uh, let's go to take a look at this right now, how to do this problem. Well, here is the problem again. And anytime you're faced with any kind of math word problem, especially like an algebra word problem, you want to try to model it, okay? And if you can model it by creating some sort of sketch or figure or table or chart, then that's the way to go. In this particular um, problem, we can easily draw a nice little figure to kind of uh, see visually what's going on. So Ron is six feet tall, so we probably want to draw a little stick figure of Ron and his height and his shadow. And then, of course, we have a tree and the tree shadow. So we can kind of like put this in one little uh, picture. And let's go ahead and just take a look at the problem this way. All right. So here is Ron. Ron is six feet tall. And here's Ron's shadow. So this is a little bit more, you know, involved in terms of a sketch. You don't even have to have it to be this uh, nice and neat. Of course, I'm using colors, which is pretty nice. But here's a 20-foot shadow for Ron. And then here is our tree. We want to know the height of a tree, of this uh, particular tree that's next to Ron. And the shadow of the tree is 90 feet. So you want to just like, you know, sketch out and model uh, the scenario, then really make sure that your model is in fact what's going on in the prom. Okay, so we're told, hey, Ron is six feet tall, his shadow is 20 feet. Uh, how tall is this tree? Okay, we're looking for X, right? X is uh, when you're um, solving a problem and you don't know the value, you use a variable to represent that unknown. Okay, but we do know that the shadow of the tree is 90 feet. Now, one thing here it's going to come into play. It's a little small uh, detail, but it's a, a very important detail is that we're kind of assuming that our tree isn't kind of like this, like a real life tree. It's not like on some sort of angle. It is a right angle. And we're kind of assuming that Ron is has nice posture, is standing up perfectly perpendicular to the ground. Okay. Because uh, what we're going to do here or the this type of problem is what we would call a ratio and proportion problem or a similar triangle problem, which requires proportions to solve. But uh, let's going to take a look at how we can actually distill down this situation this way. Okay. So what we have really is two triangles. All right. So here is Ron. Okay, this would be Ron's height, and then this is Ron's shadow, and then this is the tree's height and the tree's shadow. But here's the thing: the you know, if you look at the ground, and here is Ron, and here is the tree. If the sun is over here, the the sun is going to be casting um, a shadow that is in proportion to the height of whatever object is in front of it, i.e the proportion of Ron and his shadow will be the same as the tree to its shadow, okay? So that's the main idea here is that we're dealing with uh, two triangles, okay? We can kind of distill this problem down to two uh, triangles that are in proportion. And in uh, geometry, we'd call these similar triangles. And it's this symbol right here, uh, this little squiggly line, right? That's being similar. And basically, the way you can think of a similar triangle is a, I like to kind of think of it as a zoom in or out situation. So if I have this triangle and I zoom out, okay, I have a larger version of it. Or if I have this larger version and I kind of zoom in, I have this smaller version. But basically, here's the deal with similar triangles. Uh, and basically, this is the deal is the, all the angles will be the same, okay? So all the angles of the triangle are the same, but basically, um, 
the, the actual lengths will be different. Okay. If the lengths are, if the lengths and angles are exactly the same, i.e. you have an exact copy, you have what we call a congruent triangle. That's different. Okay. We don't have a current, uh, a congruent triangle situation here. We have a similar triangle. Okay. So just think of, oh, a zoom in and zoom out. And we have basically these theorems that, that state that, hey, if you have two similar triangles, the uh, respective lengths are in proportion. Okay. That's really, really important here. So meaning that this side is proportional to this side. If we, if we compare this side and this side of this triangle, it's going to be uh, at the same proportion as this side and this side. Okay. These sides right here, these respective setups or these comparison of these sides, okay, uh, this height to this shadow, to this height to this shadow will be equal. Okay. So we're setting up a proportion here and that's how you solve similar triangle problems. So let's go ahead and actually do this right now. So here it goes. So some of you probably already just did this way, but we're setting up this similar triangle situation. So Ron's um, height to his shadow is equal to the uh, tree's height to its shadow. Okay. Or six is to 20. All right. Six, uh, six over 20 is equal to X over 90. All right. So this is a proportion again, these res, uh, comparing these respective sides are um, equal, okay? I.e., they are a proportion. All right, so now that you understand that, and hopefully you understand that without too many uh, difficulties. So here, to solve any proportion, we can use the cross product. Again, I like to always do this. A proportion is simply two equal fractions. Let's think of another fraction equal to one half. How about three over six? So remember, the cross product is always true when you um, have a proportion. So one times six is what? One times six is equal to what? Two times three, we'll write that there. So one times six is six, six is equal to two times three, which of course is six, that is true. Okay, so here we can do the same thing. So we have X times 20 is what? 20 X, six times 90, and we'll just write that there. So 20 X is equal to six times 90, which is 540. To solve for X, I'm simply going to divide both sides of the equation by 20, and you get X is equal to 27. But uh, what does that represent, uh, right? So X is equal to 27. Well, remember, this was the height of the tree. So the tree is 27 feet tall. So all these little units of measure and, um, you know, being very precise about, you know, answering the question. If you just said, oh, the height of the tree is 27, if you were dealing with a mean math teacher, okay, someone was like, hmm, you know, I'm going to get that uh, math student, you know, they have to turn in, you know, the perfect, perfect work. They might actually, if you didn't put the unit of measure, I've definitely known math teachers uh, that will give you like, let's say eight out of 10, right? And some of you might be like extremely frustrated about that. But listen, again, I told you the first three steps of answering any question is you know, you've got to be very clear on what the question is being asked of you. So if you said, hey, how tall is something? If you said, oh, how tall are you? Six. I'm six. Well, what, six inches, six millimeters, six miles? You know, listen, you got to get units of measure, right? So feet. <laughs> so you got to put that stuff in. So luckily for me, though, I'm a pretty generous. I'm kind of a sucker for math students. If they really try and they have a good attitude, you know, I, it all depends, right? It depends on how I feel. And that's the reality of it. I might give you a nine out of 10 or maybe a 10 out of 10 and write you a little, you know, reminder, Hey, you know, make sure you watch that guy on YouTube that would teach you all that math stuff. He'll help you out to remember units of measure, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, listen, let's go and wrap it up with this. If you are needing additional help with ratio, proportions, similar triangles, etc. I have a ton of uh, stuff in my math help program. A couple uh, suggestions would be like my algebra course or my geometry course, all depending on what you're studying. I do have many more videos on my YouTube channel in terms of just general uh, word problems as well. But the only way you're going to get better at uh, solving math word problems or algebra word problems is by practicing. Okay, that's the only way you're going to get better. 
Uh, of course, you're going to have to learn the skills yeah, that are going to be required to do the problems. But if you don't do a lot of problems, you're not going to get better at math. So hopefully you like my teaching style. If that is the case, please take advantage of all these uh, videos that I make because I truly am trying to help you be successful in mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.